Hello. Today I've got a new foiling machine that I've bought um, to show you. And I've had this for a few months, so I've been playing with it and I like it. It's called the Kaleido and it's made by Crafts 2. It's um, a roughly A5 die cutting machine. It's 15 centimetres wide. Um, but it's got a heated roller in it. Um, so you get really high pressure, really high heat, and it's designed uh, to make it possible to foil stamped images just using your normal clear stamps or rubber stamps. So this is the machine. It comes with a set of plates. Um, set of plates that obviously go through the machine. Um, as I say, it works with stamped images. So I am going to show you the process from stamping to, to foiling. But I wanted to quickly show you what happens. So just give me a moment. And I, I'm trying out a different setup for my videoing today. Um, I'm using a, an earpiece that hopefully will act as a microphone and pick up better quality sound without picking up background sound, which is a problem I, I normally have. Um, but I'm having to move things around and I'm working with a different machine so um, it's all a bit different for me and I can't actually see what I'm videoing so I'm just hoping when I've got things in the middle of my mat here you can see them okay so I'm working with a stamp set that came with Phil Martin's magazine now those four beeps tell me that the Kaleido is now telling me it's hot enough to use so I'm working today with this rather lovely stamp set that came with one of Phil Martin's sort of magazine collections. So I've stamped this big corner stamp onto a background I created um, and then I'll, I'll work through the rest of it as we go. So my background it was just made using some, some inks and some blending brushes. Okay, and then I, I stamped it earlier um, so that it was ready to go when I started videoing. Okay, so I like, now with the Kaleido, it comes with, and I had it here a second ago, it comes with a blank ink pad. Now this one's been used and then I've, I've actually um, cleaned it out today. Uh, Kaleido ink cleans up with antibacterial spray cleaner. Um, because I, I found my, my ink pad had kind of got gummed up and wasn't absorbing ink properly when I re-inked it. Um, and that's a problem because I, I don't use it very often. If you're using it all the time, I'm sure it's fine. Um, but it comes with this little metal strip. And that's to, the idea of that is to hold your foil down so it doesn't end up um, wrapping around the roller in, in the actual die cutting machine. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Um, John Lockwood, who... who demonstrates this machine um, and has helped develop it. When he demonstrates, he often wraps his foil around the edge of his card. Um, but I find I actually like to work with my card um, in a in a folded folded piece of grease free paper. So I've got a nice fresh piece. I do reuse it, but I find that after a while it picks up crinkles from all the rolling. So I've got a fresh piece today. So I'm going to put my card on there. I'm going to cut some foil. Let's get my scissors that I always use for foil. And the advantage to putting it through between a piece of grease food paper is I find I can I use less foil. So I only need about that much. So I'm not doing an unboxing video or anything like that. And I am going to trim it down and away the excess. There, that will, that'll do nicely. So I can keep that between my greaseproof paper. My stamp sets out of the way. And I need to make sure that is just nicely in there 
and then let's bring this round so you can actually see it there okay so I need to put this on the plates make sure the plates are all nicely together it's in the middle and then just wind it through I'm just going to move this back out of the way. And then let's see what I've got. There we are. And you see that's foiled all the detail of that stamp. Now if you, I have tried this with really, really detailed stamps and it picks up every bit of detail. Okay, have I got one or two spots it's missed? If you're not sure if it, it's caught everything, you can put your foil back on or you put another piece of foil on and have another go. So you, you don't really have to line up your foil. In fact, sometimes it's better if you don't because then you're more likely to get foil in the places that, that missed the first time. So let me move that over a bit and even put it a different way around. I'm going to roll it again because I think there has been just one little bit that's missed on some of the flowers. Put that back in there. It is quite heavy this machine because it is a die cutting machine. And it's obviously a nice solid construction because of having the heated roller in it. I don't normally move it when I'm using it. I usually stand up and, and roll things through it. But for the purposes of the video, this is the area. And I'm because I've changed my setup, it's difficult to move my camera. So there you go. So that, that's, I think, quite nicely foiled now. Yeah, that'll be absolutely fine once, it, once it's actually in a card. So... You can see it's forward. And if I've got bits of four that haven't been used, I can trim those out and use them for things like sentiments. Okay, or you, there is a method you can use to actually transfer your waste and uh, kind of have a negative or for, negative foiling. Okay, so that's that stage of it. So let's do the rest of the bits that are going to go with the card. So I need my stamp press. Yeah, obviously you can just use a stamping block. So that makes my stamps are escaping. Um, but I like to use stamp press in case things don't quite hit the first time. Um, so let me get these stamps out. There we are. Right. So I want I want that one. onto some black card. So somewhere here I've got some black card. Now I'm going to do a video about different sorts of card stock and what works well and what doesn't. But I'm going to do it as a separate video because I think it'll all get too much and too confusing. Okay, so put this into my stamping platform and I've, I've just got some copy paper sitting in the bottom here with some guide marks on it that for a project I was doing so 
So this stamp is going to matter which way we go. So I want it that way up. And I'm going to position it on my card. Right, so it's going to be cut out with this die. Um, and I thought I could probably then use the waste from the card to map my background onto. So I'll put that there and I think that will give me enough around it to, to be able to cut the map for my background afterwards. So you're not, this is going to be really hard to see because it's on black card, but the foiling does look so beautiful on black card. So I've got my stamp, I've got my, my ink pad. Now the Kaleido ink comes in the bottle, let me show you. So you, you buy a bottle and an ink pad together. So I, I bought two bottles, so I've got two ink pads. And I, I inked this one for the first time this morning when I found the other one that had kind of gone sticky and the ink wasn't soaking in. But once, that having cleaned the other one, once it, I've made sure it's dry, I'll be able to, to use that um, as well. So it's important you keep the bottle upright and you don't shake it. Because if you shake it, it goes everywhere. <laughs> but it's water-based um, or it cleans up with water-based products. So um, it's not a huge disaster. It ju it's just a bit inconvenient. So I've got my ink pad. Ink my stamp. I might have to re-ink my ink pad. I kind of have to prime some stamps. I think this is going to be one of them. That one seems too wet. I don't know why. It's getting there. I haven't used this stamp before. I think probably what I'm going to do is get some scrap paper. And just blot this off. probably just a bit juicy uh, and I had I did have a serviette here I know I did because yeah, yeah. I've caught the my ink pad on there right that's better now I do find this ink is really good if you need to prime a stamp where the ink keeps beading. If you use the Kaleido ink to stamp and then go back to your, your normal ink, so obviously stamp the Kaleido ink onto some scrap paper or onto something you want to foil, um, and then go back to your normal ink, uh, the stamp stamps really nicely. Yeah, okay, and the card's got stuff. Okay, so that will have transferred anyway, so that's fine. Now, I don't think you're going to be able to see this on the camera, but I will hold it up to the camera. I can see. I don't know. I'm going to tilt that around to say I can't see what the camera is picking up. So I'm just going to do that. Hope you can see it. Okay, so that's my my topper, and then I'm going to stamp a sentiment. Now, one of the reasons I've I've, I've done a combination of different sorts of cards is because I wanted to use different bits of card. So this is a 250 GSM uh, smooth card. Uh, the black card is Linda Chapman's black card from Creative Crafting World. And the background I did um, is on 350 GSM stamping stroke watercolour card. So it's a smooth watercolour card. So I just like to take any excess off my stamp. Let's put 
that over there and find my other stamp set. Now I want to do, um, just for you, for your birthday, in this set. Just for you. Yeah. On your birthday. And those are going to be cut out of this die. Let me move my magnets out of the way a minute and make sure I'm putting this. Where it'll fit. Put that down. It's a bit of a higgledy piggledy sentiment, so whilst I'm trying to get it straight, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to pick the stamps up. Oh, that's clever. Let me make sure they are still where I want them. The acetate from the stamp set got stuck. That's better. Put my magnets on. Take my die out of the way. Okay, so I'm getting some ink pooling on that as well. So I'm going to do the same as before. Blot it with some paper. You sometimes get that route when stamps are new. They have a residue from the manufacturing process. That you know, he does look very wonky though. see just how wonky that is before I stamp it on my card. That's very wonky. Checking that the die still goes round. Yeah, that'll be fine. Right. Oh no, I should get some on the card. I'm going to turn the card over. Stamp this and then go back for a, a second inking. There. 
So it is, it's part of the design is that it's a messy stamp. I'm not sure I should be part of the own missing though. There we go, back one more time. Maybe I should because it won't sink. So that needs to dry off before I try foiling it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for a moment. And I did experiment earlier with actually using my heat gun uh, to dry some stamping I've done on a shiny paper. And that seemed to work okay. Um, I want to foil this before I die cut it okay it's a bit too big at the moment so I'm just gonna cut this down with my mini guillotine and I'm gonna leave it a bit bigger than I want because I, I want to use the waste to map my um, background onto I'll take it about there Still need trimming a bit more once I've foiled. Okay. So I'm gonna cut myself a piece of foil for this. Oh. Yeah, at the end of my roll of foil. I do have another one. Is that wide enough? I think so. So I know you can't see this because it's on black card. So I'm going to put this over. And if I find it wasn't quite big enough, I can always move it and I'll use the other piece and uh, put it through the Kaleido again. So move that out of the way. I want my good piece of grease free paper. stamps and things out of the way and bring the machine back in Keep winding so that comes out easily. Right, let's have a look. Okay, I think there is a bits at the edges that I might have just missed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other piece of foil, I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going to put one piece down that edge and one piece down that edge. And 
then I'm going to run it through the machine again. I think there are just a little bit at those edges. Let's bring the machine back. Okay, normally I would stand up and use my machine rather than keep moving it. little bits there okay and I've got a little line in my butterfly there so I'm just going to put that piece of foil back up in that corner and go again sure the plates are all lined up and you can come back the other way if you're just doing a small area there's my foiling and that's going to be a topper on my card I'm going to die cut that okay let's have a look at my sentiment so I'm going to fold that in gold as well but I need to find some more foil so I'm going to stop the camera while I go rummaging for my other roll of foil and then I'll be back Okay, so this is how the rolls of foil for the Kaleido come. Now it can work with other foils that are toner reactive or other, other brands of toner reactive foil, which means the range of foils available is huge. But these are really good value. They look like they're tiny little rolls, but they're a three metre roll. They're just on a very, very small core. Um, and as I say, they, they're they're actually really good value um, so yeah they come done up with a sticker which I'm trying to remove carefully there we are let's put that way it's not going to get stuck to things I've got quite a sticky edge there, so I'm going to just trim that tiny bit off. Because there's nothing worse than working with foil, having something that's sticky around. Okay, so I just want enough to, to do that sentiment. And for that reason, I've got a pair of scissors that I only use for cutting foil. They never go near anything sticky. The only other thing I'd use them for is for cutting ribbon. Um, and I always put my no, my foils that have come in these plastic cases back in them because they keep them really nicely and stop the ends from getting tatty. Again, that goes into my my little pocket here. Let me move that and that out of the way. So I've got a little 
dustpan I use for it. And it scraps in and that's got stuck to my finger. See what I mean about having sticky things around the before really? Right, that's in there now. That's out the way. I've got some waste foil there. Right, so let's get the Kaleido machine in. It is, as I say, quite heavy. I don't normally move it around. over here there so let's peel the foil off and there is my foiled sentiment that's foiled really nicely if you do get any odd bits of foiling where you don't want them and that if I can that's good if you've got some ink on your fingers and sometimes you can't even see it on your fingers and, and it's it's managed to transfer um, you, you can use a, a sand eraser to, to take those off if they're very small amounts um, so I've got a little bit there and I'm just going to take that off before I die cut And I've got a couple of different sand erasers here. I've got one that's a, a Faber Castell kind of eraser in a pencil, and that they make this for erasing their coloured pencils. Um, and I find that works quite well on very small bits. You can get really focused in there. Okay. And I've also got a Tombow mono sand eraser, it's got a rough end and a smoother end and that, that's also quite good um, so they're the two things I use the most for removing over foiling um, and if, but if you get the Kaleido ink um, really where you don't want it um, I actually find the best thing to do is leave it dry and then scrape it off with a craft knife but again you can only do that for very small bits okay so I'm going to die cut these and um, get ready to put the card together and then come back to you, okay? Because you don't need to see me die cutting. Okay, so I've die cut the pieces and I decided I might as well stick the card together for you to see before restarting the camera. So the reason I've die cut after I foiled is that the, the dies I'm using have got a really nice um, in sort of deboss detail around the edge of them and if I had die cut first and then used rolled the piece of card with the Kaleido it would actually sort of iron that flat and I, I'd lose that detail so th that's the reason why I die cut afterwards so this is the card um, and I, I think it's come together quite nicely um, I'm hoping you can see the foiling as I'm twiddling it about here. I've covered my mat uh, with some paper because I realised I've got light reflecting off the glass mat. Um, so, as I say, I'm trying out this new setup for my videoing. So I'm just really not sure quite what you're seeing. So I'm moving this around and up and down. And hopefully you can see just how beautifully detailed that foiling is. It's picked up every bit of detail from the stamps. Um, and I, I just think it's got so much potential, you know, stamps with coordinating die sets and doing backgrounds or doing toppers, doing custom sentiments, um, or just sentiments that, you know, from a stamp set, you thought, oh, I'd love to have those folded, but they just don't do a foiling plate to, to use with other systems for them. Um, and because this is toner reactive foil, you, you can print items on your laser printer if you've got one or get them photocopied um, and use it to foil those. 
so there we are that's my card for today and i hope you've enjoyed my video i hope my new setup hasn't been too um distracting um i think in some ways it works better i think i need to sort out some problems with lighting um and knowing exactly where things need to be on my mat um so thanks for your patience with me trying out new things my kaleido and my new filming setup and uh, thanks for watching.